This video is sponsored by NordVPN. What if I told you that you can do magic? Would you look at me and go, magic's not real? Well, you're wrong because with NordVPN, you can literally use VPN magic to mask your IP address. Why would you do that, you ask? Great question. You do so in order to access games or servers or movies and TV shows from out of country. Protect your personal payment or login info online or even block malicious websites. All of which NordVPN makes as easy as one click on any device. If you're interested in upgrading your internet with Nord VPN magic, then click the link in the description below to get Nord's exclusive 30 day money back guarantee. And now onto the video. Hey everyone, Bandit here. Ever heard of the Zelda game called Ocarina of Time? The answer is yes. Do you remember that weird cloaked figure with that giant red eye that only appeared when Link was an adult in the adult timeline, not the child timeline? The Poe Hunter, or Ghost Hunter, has for decades been quite the mystery for those who enjoy delving into theory territory. And actually, on that note, there have been lots of conclusions drawn about just who this purple stick waver could be. There are some who believe the individual to be the young child in the graveyard, who waves a stick around and is interested in grave tours and stuff. And that's pretty much the theory. <laughs> no joke, sometimes that's all that goes into these things. Another more believable theory is that the hunter is none other than the Hylian soldier, who previously was standing in this very spot seven years ago. And this is actually a decently believable theory. I mean, that soldier does say some pretty weird stuff about a lack of troubles in the world making him bored, and that he likes and studies ghosts? Tie that into the Poe hunter's hunting of Poe's and his twisted sense of humor with all the giggles and the whole, you know, telling Link he could sell his body for money thing, and the Triforce symbol on his clothing, and the crudely drawn Triforce on the wall behind him, and you've got yourself a decent Zelda theory. Even though both of these theories are at least somewhat believable in their own right, unfortunately neither of them account for what is perhaps the most intriguing and recognizable detail of the Poe Collector, and that is his face, or lack thereof. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying it's wrong to believe whatever explanation feels right to you as an individual. After all, we wouldn't be theorizing in the first place if any of this were confirmed in-game. Thanks for being vague, Nintendo. With that said though, as I'm sure you predicted, I tend to think a bit differently than the theories that I presented so far. And it's all because of the Poe Hunter's big red eye. Specifically the fact that there's only one, and it's red, and it's glowing. I just feel very strongly that this is the most key identifying detail to figure out, and once we do, we can work backwards from there to draw another conclusion. If you think about it, the only creatures in the entire game that feature one eye besides the Poe Collector themselves are all enemies. And for some reason, I find it hard to believe that a Beemos is just chilling here in the castle marketplace talking about dead people. And if we search through every non-enemy character in the game, we are left with a whopping zero personalities for potential one-eyed creeps. I know knew it wasn't going to be this simple, so since we can't just point to another one-eyed individual for an easy answer, let's widen the search. What about symbols? Are there symbols in the game that prominently feature just one central eye? Any fan of The Legend of Zelda will automatically think of the Sheikah, whose symbol is famously the single eye with a teardrop, and it's the only symbol in the entire game that could fit the single eye description too. But okay, we have a symbol and a one-eyed hooded figure. What's the connection here? Well, I'm so glad you asked because there just so happens to be a mask in the game that prominently features the one-eyed Sheikah symbol in the faceplate, and that is the Mask of Truth. And masks are worn on faces, so if this individual were to be wearing the Mask of Truth with a hood over it, that would explain the red eye, which is, as I already mentioned, the key identifying feature of the Poe Collector. In fact, this is probably the only explanation in the entire game for it, given that the Poe Collector looks pretty much like a plain Jane human being otherwise. But now we've got to ask a couple other questions, like why is the red eye glowing when the mask is not shown to do that elsewhere? And who, if anyone, could even have possession of the Mask of Truth at this particular point in time? Great questions. Once again, let's start with the glowy bit. If you recall, when talking to the Happy Mask salesman as a child, he will tell you that it's a mysterious mask passed down by the Sheikah that allows you to see into other people's minds. Then he says that it's scary, but you'll understand why when you grow older. Which is just a little joke about how sick people can be when they're all grown up but it's also a very telling detail. See, if you run around with a mask on as a child, you can talk to gossip stones, which previously you couldn't, and get that latest mad gossip about eye roll, but you can't read people's minds. And subsequently, the mask never glows. Now, it could be that the Happy Mask salesman, while lightheartedly joking about how scary it is to read adult minds, also literally meant that the mask's mind-reading powers only activate when worn by an adult. And if you recall once again, when meeting the Poe Collector for the first time, who is definitely an adult, they say 
state Link that they can, in fact, quote, read people's minds. And they do so by telling Link what his name is before he even says anything. And interestingly enough, the words people's minds only appear twice in the entire game script, here and when talking to the Happy Mask salesman about the Mask of Truth. It's pretty plausible at this point that what this all means is that the Mask of Truth has the power to read other people's minds when worn by an adult, which would explain why the Poe Collector can read Link's mind and it's glowing here, but not here. Now that we've established that this is most likely a person wearing the Mask of Truth, it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Who that be? And could it be that this is the soldier from seven years ago who is now somehow wearing the mask? Sure, it's possible. We can only speculate on how the soldier would have happened upon possession of the mask, though. On the other hand, the one person who we know for a fact is in possession of the Mask of Truth would be the Happy Mask salesman himself. In fact, it's one of the masks that Link can't sell to anyone, but can only borrow. Unless the Happy Mask salesman gave the mask to the soldier for some unknown reason at some point within the seven-year gap between timelines, this means that the Poe Collector has to be none other than the Happy Mask Salesman. I mean, it's not like they're not similar. They both have pretty much the same skin tone, are both skinny adults, are both located in the Castletown Marketplace, are both vendors, both have a strange sense of humor, both wear purple with gold jewelry, and both deal with the spirits of the dead. Yeah, if you take the Happy Mask Salesman's appearance from Majora's Mask into account, then you know that at least some of the man's masks actually house ghosts or spirits of the dead inside them. Sorry, Mario. And since he is a collector of these masks, is that not extremely similar to the collector of Poe's? They also both have another very interesting connection in their dialogue, with the Poe collector telling Link that if he earns a thousand points by collecting and selling lots of Poe's, he will be a happy man. And the happy mask salesman also tells Link that if he sells all the masks, he will become happy. Happy is also in the name happy mask salesman. So they definitely have an alarmingly high amount of similarities, both physically and metaphysically, that seem to prove that they are the same individual. And I mean, it's not like it doesn't make sense. The Happy Mask Salesman wouldn't have been able to remain in his old shop since it's kind of missing a roof these days, and with the current state of affairs, also known as the desertion of Hyrule Castletown and complete lack of occupants or potential mask-hungry customers, perhaps he donned the Mask of Truth in order to see into people's minds and determine if they are friend or foe, and ultimately gave up the whole Mask Salesman persona since there were no peaceful Hylians around to fool anymore and he could just call it what it is that he's marketing now. Pose. Souls. Now I can tell some of you are already thinking, aha, got him, there's no way it could be the Happy Mask Salesman because the Happy Mask Salesman goes off on his own journey in the child timeline, leading to the events of Majora's Mask before the adult timeline. So that can't be him right here. And that's a good point. However, I'd say that the very fact that the Mask Salesman goes off to Termina prior to Majora's Mask is proof that he probably remained in Hyrule after Ganondorf took control in Ocarina of time, and here's why. If the Happy Mask Salesman is the Poe Collector, take a listen to one other thing he says. He calls Ganondorf the Great Ganondorf and says that it's a great time for the Poe business. Why? Because Ganondorf and his monsters have killed lots of people and therefore created lots of lingering ghosts. Pose. But after Link defeats Ganondorf at the end of the adult timeline and gets sent back to the new child timeline and warns the Hylian crown about the dangers of Ganondorf, the King of Thieves is banished to the Twilight Realm, after some technical difficulties. And it is only then in this new child timeline that the Happy Mask Salesman leaves Hyrule and the events of Majora's Mask transpire. Why? Because he's looking to be in the presence of someone he considers great. Someone who brings with them lots of death. He's looking for a place to do business. I mean, what else would be the catalyst for him to leave in the child timeline, if not Ganondorf's banishment. And listen, the guy's messed up, okay? He's got a very dark side to him. He can flip his mood on a switch, he deals with the souls of the dead, and he may not even be from this planet. And he's in possession of one of the darkest and most evil relics in the entire series. So yeah, I think that if the great Ganondorf remained in Hyrule, then so did the Happy Mask Salesman, the Poe Collector. But this is all just my theory. It doesn't account for the alternate universe appearance of the Poe Collector in Majora's Mask, although the similar appearance could just be a coincidence, since the dev team had to reuse lots of models from Ocarina of Time because of the short development time, and it could even still be the Happy Mask Salesman or even one of his kin from the moon, but that is an entire other theory. What do you guys think? Is the Poe Collector the bored soldier who said some pretty weird stuff seven years ago, or is it the Happy Mask Salesman for any of the reasons brought up in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Also, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking the video if you enjoyed it, which helps a lot on the 
algorithm and subscribe to stick around if you haven't already, especially so that you won't be confused in the coming weeks. As a quick update for those of you who may have missed my previous video or who may be new to the channel, there's a pretty major change coming. I'm going to be rebranding the name of this channel from Masked and a Bandit to Bandit Games, which is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. If you'd like more details as to why I chose to do this, check out my previous video which will be linked in the description below. But either way, make sure you're subscribed so that the channel's new name doesn't miss your notifications. Also, huge thanks to my Bandit crew, of which I have another new name to announce. Say hello to Weezer, who joined at the Trickster level. Thank you guys so much, you're literally what keeps me going with the channel and pushes me to try to go big or go home. And that's all I've got for this one, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Bandit, looking forward to seeing you next time, and signing out. Peace!